Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agassino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agassino Zynga. And this is episode number 401. 401. 401. That's 401 of the Agassino Zynga Show. How are you guys doing? How are you guys feeling? Great. Good to know. Welcome back, man. Another show, another day, another pod. Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are feeling good. Hope COVID is treating you well. Hope you're not, you know, slowly but surely running off of a hill somewhere, throwing yourself off of a building, all well, that sort of malarkey. Hope you're doing good and you're just plainfully just accepting the situation that we're in and trying to make the best of it. Because that's what I'm doing. That's the best I can do, right? My hair's a bit mad. My beard has gone all weird. My hoodie's colours all died out. I'm an absolute mess, but we're going to be a mess together. And that's what matters, isn't it? that's what matters of course if you're the first time checking the show via youtube make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and comment down below i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions and of course if you're listening via the podcast apps on spotify apple wherever it may be make sure you download the show share it leave me a five star review all that good stuff all that attention all that good noise all that recommendations are much much appreciated and of course you can support the podcast via patreon please do on patreon i've got one bonus show per week available from this week onwards so make sure you do that patreon.com for like Christina for less one pound or equivalent of one dollar per week you get one episode bonus on Patreon only. Not available anywhere else. Only available on Patreon. So make sure you sign up on there. Patreon.com for Agostino. Support on there is much appreciated. Click the link in the description. Make sure you get on that. Yeah, man, we're here. We're here, it. We're here. We're hanging on. We're doing the best that we can with the time that we have available. And we're trying to make the best of it. I've got my drink in hand. I hope you have yours. Let's take a sip and let's get in tune. Have any of you, do you, any of you pay attention and watch international football? Nations League without madness. I have no idea how it works. I have no idea where anyone is. I've never looked at a table. I don't give a Scooby crap or Scooby snack about what's going on. I just want stuff to return to normality. Or I don't know. It's like even club football, right? Especially maybe it's the time we're living at the moment. It just feels weird, isn't it? Like it's a great thing to have. Don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a much welcome distractions from the horrors of the everyday life right who wants to be talking about covid every single day but there is a part of me that thinks imagine like these, these people are being put through absolute hell to bring us entertainment right essentially they're being they're putting their lives online if ever there was a time where somebody's um because you know the, especially in the uk we have an obsession with knowing how much footballers earn right and we use it as a stick to beat them over the head with if ever there was a time where they kind of earn their money footballers now is a moment. However many thousands or millions to get paid per week to constantly be putting the health of yourself and your family at risk to provide entertainment for millions across the world, that is definitely worth whatever you're getting paid per week. It definitely is. No one can excuse that because God almighty. Imagine if you're... Because it helps, I guess, if you're a footballer and you don't really care about COVID and you don't, you know, you're one of the COVID deniers out there. You sort of don't think it's a big, big deal. It's, it's not as bad as, a, it's just as bad as a cold, blah, blah, blah. It's not a big issue. But if you're somebody that's super in tune with what's going on in the news, you're following what's happening, you're reading the papers, you're checking social media, you're seeing all the bad accounts, people dying, losing arms, and whole flipping generations of families being wiped out by this virus, you're definitely going to be worried playing football, isn't it? Which might explain why we don't really have consistency in the results, isn't it? Big teams are beating small teams. No, small teams are beating big teams quite consistently. The league table looks like it's upside down, right? It doesn't really make any sense, right? Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Maybe that's part of it. But regardless, I'm, I'm thankful for it, I guess, in some regard, that the footballers are around doing it. But when it comes to international football, I could give a flying crap. I really could, man. I could really care less. Like if ever if ever there was a time where I could give two less just two less of a shit, it would be definitely during international football week or weeks. And especially when they you know, like it's bad enough they're putting themselves through torture during the regular season to provide entertainment. Then they're gonna have to go travel abroad to meet up with their fellow countrymen. Don't get me wrong, it's great, it's amazing. As Papa said, and you got in trouble for, you know, meeting up with your people from, you know, your home nation, speaking your mother tongue. It's nothing quite like it, I imagine, in football, especially, you know, signing yourself such an international cast at your club level, being back home and being with your people, it must just be so nice and grounding. But doing it during international week and then make yourself, you know, potentially put yourself in danger with injuries and then having to go back to your club, having to answer to them. It just must be so annoying, man. But hey, I can't complain in it. 
I cannot complain. Anyway, we've got many topics to get through. So many things to talk about. I don't want to waste many more of your time. So let's just dive right on deep in the topics and answer as many topic questions as we can. All the cultural and relevant topics. You know, you come to me for that information. So let's dive on in. Number one. Um, kind of piggybacking off of some of the stuff I spoke about in the previous podcast concerning some of the very unsavory allegations that have been levied against Derek May. It seems like there's a bit of an issue in dance music, man, um, in my area of interest, right? I am a fan and a absolute whore for nightlife. It's probably the wrong thing to say at this junction, but whatever, you know what I mean, right? I'm an absolute fan of the culture. I'm an absolute fan of dance music. I'm an absolute fan of it in all its different guides, all its different genres. So I obviously have got a long history in promoting events in London, DJing here in London. So I'm very about to have traveled the world to various clubs and you know, hanging out and you know seeing some of the biggest DJs playing some of the best festivals around the world. I am very much very much a part of it. Um but reading some of these accounts and kind of uncovering what happens behind the scenes with professionals let alone punters i understand there might be some creeps in the crowd i get that but knowing the difficulties that are you know ahead of women in the industry first of all and just getting recognized and then having to kind of navigate through the creeps it's really eye-opening it has to be said it really is eye-opening i knew there was some sort of debauchery happening we've all seen it we've all been maybe a part of it where you kind of end up in a mad crazy night at someone's afters and you're like what the hell am i doing here right everyone's kind of been in those situations but to know that professionals or aspiring professionals are going through this day-to-day behind the scenes with their fellow peers is just mind-boggling and this is another account here from mixmag the following which is titled a ghastly a ghastly ceiling with razor wire the harsh reality for women working in dance music is penned by annabella ross the same person that did the whole expose on Derek may and it features an account of a woman who has over 20 years experience in dance music industry talks about her coercion bribery and harassment she faced in her career the whole thing is super super harrowing but one of the main bits i wanted to kind of pull out was uh this bit as i guess it's an interview it says the question is following Alain Belarus asks a woman, another Miss Lady in question. So as a twenty as a woman with twenty years experience uh, in the music industry and ten of those years working in dance music, what would you like to tell us about the inappropriate behaviour towards female colleagues in the workplace? She says 20 years is a long time and generally you start to a very young age in music industry so your first experience is usually quite polarizing one when inappropriate sexual language or advances first happen you either kind of accept it or fortify yourself against it you leave if or if you or you leave the industry right which is really harrowing in itself right so either you kind of suck up suck up and sort of like you know um suck it up and accept it's going to be a thing and defend yourself as best as you can or you just pick a different vocation which is you know I don't know. The amount of people that we have lost just off the back of this talented people is just, you know, it, it beggars belief. It continues. And I think at that at that point the industry loses a lot of the talent because if you're not alone if you're not able to weather the first few jarring experiences on the cli- of the climate, it is going to get a lot worse later on. Because there's uh because it oh sorry, I'm going to later on. Because there's a climate, a landscape, as it, why is it written like this? And it continues. It's going to get worse later on. Because it is a climate, a landscape, as it is present in practically everything you do, everywhere you go, everyone you meet, and everyone who is prepared to acknowledge or work alongside you, prefer you or to ignore you. For women of color, there are also layers again. The industry is losing really talented personnel because when you first enter the industry, you are so green. You don't even have life experience. You don't have industry experience. You don't have gender experience. And you have a lot of people who can be 10, 20, 30 years older than you influencing your direct environment. And you can be considered fresh meat arriving into the industry. And if you think people don't talk in dark corners like that, then you are naive. Lock, quote unquote locker room is not just an exclusive domain of political presidents. I have ever heard conversations that are akin to sexual sweepstakes regarding who will get there first to a new face in the scene. When you look historically at the music industry, the typical jobs included for women included were receptionist, secretary, PA, coat check girl, office managers with lower responsibilities and therefore less power and lower pay, but very high accessibility. These positions tend to be incredibly unstable and that opens everybody up to manipulation because there are a few discernible routes for a woman into and through the industry. It has gotten a lot better, but it's still based in a personal determination more than anything else. But there are not many educational routes 
we are going to learn about the reality of the music industry, even management or artist management, and then be placed on a personal carousel, sorry, on a career carousel, which is going to take you through all these different uh, roles and opportunities. You usually have to fight to get in. You have to struggle in every single place you move to. And because there isn't a roadmap through the industry, there is rarely a HR department to protect you. You are on your own. Most of the music industry is freelance, contract or interim roles. There's very little detail written down in terms of employment contracts and expected behavior from your company until you start getting into those important money-making positions. So all of those checks and balances that people usually experience in other businesses are not always there. And as this industry is built on the nighttime economy, it's a unique environment that often means people don't have their wits about them and as predators can move in. So, so many issues and pitfalls there, I think, not only affect women, well, mostly are going to be- definitely negatively affect women worse, well, are going to affect women worse, but I think are definitely issues that affect people that are in a company in their life industry regardless, right? So, I look at myself and I think when you're coming up and you're trying to DJ, especially if you don't have experience putting on your own nights, you end up kind of going through this circuit where you do these sort of like pay for play things or you're paying to play these rubbish places in Soho or doing open deck nights in some, some, you know, undescript location. And there's obviously prime for exploitation there, not being told about certain things, getting there, the equipment doesn't work. Loads of points right where there can be some hurdles, but usually they're hurdles about equipment and, you know, maybe not a lot of people turning up to the night you're putting on, but they're not hurdles where you actually think you actually kind of, um, afraid for your own personal safety and that's the issue that I see reading these sort of accounts especially for women in the nightlife industry now part of me feels a little bit um, pessimistic where I think how is this gonna, ever going to change because it's a nightlife industry it it kind of generally is going to attract deviants just because it's in the night time and I think people just tend to think they can get away with stuff because it's dark um, that's unfortunate part of the thing and I also think there's an unfortunate part of the industry which is kind of accepted where there are kind of occasions, it does kind of lend itself to debauchery. Let's just say that, right? There are there are people who kind of get into it just for that kind of side of things, right? And that is a thing, right? Of course, there, it, it kind of helps when it's sort of um, amicable. So it sort of helps when it's something that you both come into it with sort of, you know, the same sort of feelings. It's like, you know, you think of all the legendary sex clubs in Berlin and stuff, wherever it may be. Everyone's going in there consensually knowing what's up, right? But there's also an element of like, yeah, there's... There's a line that you shouldn't cross. There's obviously a code of ethics in place. There's rules. There's just general manners, whatever it may be, that are placed that are going to ensure that people behave. And obviously, again, that's a different kind of climate. There's checks and balances around people, right? You, if ever you've been to Berlin and, or Bergheim in general, and you try and do things that you'd have done in your own club spaces in your own local city, and you have people that are in the environment that are not even part of the management of the club telling you off and telling you, no, 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 you can't do that, right? that goes to show that that kind of helps to cultivate an environment that feels somewhat safe because everyone's sort of like looking out for each other. But when left to their own devices, it feels like something like this will never change, right? Because people are just out for their own gain. But part of me thinks optimistically that the more of these accounts we have speaking openly about the issues behind the scenes, the more we're going to come to solution. Because for myself personally, especially when I used to put on nights, I kind of went out of my way to book obviously female DJ because you know I'm very aware of the lack of this of the discrepancy especially at the in the uh, especially in the in in a band that I'm in in a sort of like lower to higher lower tier of DJs there is definitely a lack of DJs playing who are female in the scene it just is a thing if they do if they do if they are around they usually always kind of maneuver in all girl groups and now reading these uh, reading these accounts, it makes complete sense. You know, they travel in numbers to make them, to, you know, to feel safe and to kind of look out for each other. But I don't think that's necessary. I don't think the only way for girls to play is to get booked on a flipping female only agency. That's ridiculous, right? They should be able to feel safe playing on any lineup in any kind of environment because people are out there looking after them. And I've always kind of gone out of my way to try and do that. Book some females, you know, when I've created space, make sure it's welcoming and appealing to everybody just so that everyone can feel safe, relax. And that they can have good memories of the place that they came to that's got my name attached to it and that they want to come and support me for as few as you think. That's shit, personally, right? It doesn't even go as far. It's just not even as altruistic as like, I want to make sure everyone feels sexually liberated all this sort of like, No, it's not even that highfalutin. It's just the fact that I just want to make people, I make sure everyone has a good time so they come back the next time. And I want to go out of my way to make sure that girls who go out and usually feel, you know, creeped on and feel a little bit violated to make them feel extra well so that they can go and kind of preach the 
gospel of my parties to three or four of their friends and then they can become friends later on or fans later on regardless and that should be the mo for everybody involved in it but i do think there should be an extra onus being put on people especially some of the older folk to go out their way to definitely bring or definitely put or definitely have to kind of put their arm around some females in the industry when they're coming up because it feels like at every turn when you're kind of going up and you're trying to make your way especially if god forbid you're pretty right there's always going to be somebody that's looking to kind of exploit you and take advantage of your situation and that's the issue that i'm kind of having that i kind of not sure how we're ever going to rectify that is especially when it goes the higher up you go and you're starting to kind of progress your career you're starting to get endorsements it feels like you're always going to come into contact with people that are going to try and test you now whether or not it's a thing of like hey we have to recognize this is always going to happen let's kind of give these females information beforehand so that they know what to look out for that might be a thing and there's also again i said before where i definitely think there is a perverse danger or there's a perverse danger no there's a real danger in maybe us not looking at the bigger picture and seeing what actually is the danger isn't just the monsters it's mostly the network of people around them that allow it to happen or the scene wherever it may be right that allow these kind of mad situations to transpire that's where we should really be pointing our eyes on because to if you if you're telling me that somebody that's a sexual abuser sexual assaulter that goes on and creeps on women at night times and takes advantage of their power position and sort of tries to exchange whatever career trajectory for sexual favors if you're telling me that no one else on the scene knows about this and these things are only done behind the scenes behind closed doors in a booth in a toilet booth somewhere i don't believe it I think managers know, agents know, friends know, supporting DJs know, you know, um, photographers know. Everyone knows. Everyone's seen what's going on, but they just choose to look the other way because they don't want to get in trouble and they don't want to maybe upset the apple cart and get a bad rep in the industry for being difficult to work with. That's the problem. We need to give those people, we need to tell those people to be brave, to step up and protect women, stand up in front of them and sort of, or stand up in front of them and make sure that they are not put in these uncompromised positions because this is really bad, man. Really, really bad. Um, uh, da, 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 da. it continues to say can you talk a little bit about the business practices within the industry that concern unwanted social advances bribery and coercion she says so there are a number of different tactics in terms of coercion i have touched on them after our culture and the proliferation of alcohol and drugs so getting people drunk people putting drugs into their drinks all those kinds of things have been very uh, much a part of the past of the industry for years like jesus christ we have to understand the manipulation the manipulation of drunk people is strategy to get information leverage deals that would not be ordinary to be achieved and create anecdotes that undermine people's professionals uh people professionally by leading people into screen scenarios that they would not normally choose and therefore create secrets between instigator and the focus on the manipulator ah that is mad isn't it god that is sickening get somebody involved in a put them in a comprehensive permission comprehensive position sorry that creates a bond between the assaulter and the person that's a victim which then leads to years and years of prolonged abuse shit I said, it continues, I know of people who unwillingly had drugs put in their drinks, a female tour manager and a female artist, the easy access to date rape drugs such as Ripenol and GHB, especially over recent decades, culminated in a huge problem. Predators try to get somebody drunk in order to take advantage of them. If one has tranquilized into a situation, the victim has no chance to escape. This has devastating impact on them privately for years afterwards because they cannot escape their abusers professionally. This is true and this is very similar to the allegations that were kind of footed towards that were kind of put towards eric may or, me, or eric Murillo before he passed and of course derek may now they are word for word the same things right this idea that you come into a safe space uh, appearingly what is is kind of appears to be a safe space and then through drinks and manipulation you know they show you one face and then after the drinks they show you a completely different face oh, harrowing one of the ugliest experiences I have ever worked with is a foreign promoter who was trying to bring me into a global network as I had contacts with big brands that wished to reach the youth style or lifestyle audiences that I had a requirement for a local partnership in a specific location. One needs to be able to string together a number of events around the world and that forces you to sometimes have to choose individuals that you would never <laughs> have in your professional environment. In certain territories, the level of expertise and professional expectation is high, but internationally it can be very difficult to find people of a certain caliber especially in the late in the late night um economy we are frequently 
come across people who are very dubious characters who you do not often find out until too late people will tend to hide their true character and behave professionally when there is money and opportunity on the table and when you are dealing with them in the office during the day the night the late night economy historically attracts people who are not home amongst illegal prostitution who are at home sorry amongst illegal prostitution and drugs very, very true any business that is cash rich whether it's a laundry or a nightclub is going to attract dubious and unwelcome personalities i've had to deal with a foreign promoter hiring a blatantly underage sex worker and taking this child back to his hotel room jesus christ and dj handlers who as well as organizing the charges uh, professional soaring life um, also organize the prostitutes on arrival at every city on tour one can also find themselves in the company of corrupt public officials i've been invited to what i thought was a professional meeting and ended up sat in a meeting with a city chief of police officers who was chopping out lines of cocaine in what could be described as a brothel while i'm trying to get them to approve an event license mama mia i have a lot of, I have a lot of similar anecdotes <coughs> sorry <coughs> i have a lot of similar anecdotes from across the world as a woman traveling on one's own this opens up one up to a lot of potential situations that can go very very badly very quickly and leave one feeling afterwards as a co-conspirator or an enabler when in fact you are just a witness of a victim yourself like god almighty man harrowing harrowing instant story to read and again um i'm just one guy i don't know what what only thing that i can do in my because again i try to get some lessons from this and apply it to my everyday life is whatever i put on an event if ever i book a female it makes sure that they are feeling incredibly incredibly safe and provide them with as best an environment possible for them to kind of show off their talents gain a better fan base and just have a hell of a time and try and put my best foot forward that way but i don't know as an industry overall i really do think the onus needs to be put a focus needs to be put on the support network around people that allows them to get away with this sort of madness because it's no way shape or form that these secrets can be secrets for no long they need to be brought out there in the open and people need to be held accountable especially the network of people that support them that is what i think continue continue on oh yes we have this very okay i haven't watched this yet right but supposedly it's a pretty funny video courtesy of adam Bayer, who seems to be a little bit of a weapon when it comes to the business techno scene right he's always kind of you know he, he doesn't really have the best reputation in terms of how he carries himself and all that sort of malarkey so let's see what adam Bayer has to say regarding you know what's happening at the moment with lockdown and you know it feels like DJs have been handling the lockdown as worse as you know as bad as some of the actors in Hollywood who have been you know getting themselves naked and all the people get people to vote sinking hallelujah all this sort of nonsense DJs especially the business techno lot have been taking the lockdown pretty badly even though most of them were pretty much touring throughout the entirety of the lockdown anyway regardless but let's see what Adam Bayer has to say behind it so this is a Instagram post that he shared it says the following um real adam buyer our techno world is at a standstill clubs disappear jobs are lost no parties until the early hours but techno is and will always be there people that talk like this like what are you talking about bro i'm glad none of my friends like this right it continues um some say no um so it's really that again our techno world that is at a standstill clubs disappear jobs are lost no parties until the early hours but techno is and will always be there the techno feeling is in you even now in a world that is torn apart together we stand strong this is what what are you talking about you, you're saying if, if i put on a compulsive track that suddenly racism disappears shut up bruv it continues some say it's just a party but we know it's so much more than that together we are techno hashtag techno together hashtag drum code for life what has there been a maybe apart from who can i think of apart from Derek may of course for, for recent incidences but has there been anyone else who is as has as much ex, who has as much um who's been as long as the industry as adam Bayer, who's kind of devalued their reputation over the years has there been anyone else as big as him who's turned into an absolute weapon over the years can you think of somebody else i can't think of somebody he seems like the biggest guy who has completely done a complete 360 and turned into an absolute idiot but anyway let's play his, let's play his little video have you ever wondered why it became a part of you something so out of this world <laughs> running fuck off fuck off absolute wankers what is this bruv 
What is this? What is this self-indulgent bullcrap, bro? This is this is just as bad as that. What's that Berlin label that makes all that techno clothing and all the it's all these like twenty-two year olds like standing next to fences and pulling all weird faces with chains across their faces and shit. What is that label? Is it NACT or N A K N A K T or something? Remember, there's that techno label that makes clothes and they have like a jacket that says no GHB, no pictures or some shit. Come on, dude, give give do yourself a favor, mate. Chills down your spine. It moves in the shadows. <laughs> Fuck off. Oh, Adam Bay doesn't care about the sound man coming on and going for the equipment. He doesn't care. He's just there for the, the flipping, the, the DJ gig money and take a couple pictures with some cute girls and keep it moving, right? He's got Ida Enberg back at... Look, again, why does Ida Enberg carry herself more well much more better on social media than adam bayer does come on bruv oh flourishes in the dark <laughs> it's everywhere what off have you been to with this techno apart from berlin tell me what off have you been to what off license have you been to where you've looked at the lights and thought wild techno those guys want you to get the fuck out get your beers and move giving us You might say it's just a party, <laughs> but we know it is so much more than that. <laughs> oh, fuck Adam Bayer, man. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck business techno. Fuck all those guys, man. They don't represent me. They represent the scene. These guys are just like the worst part of the industry. The worst part. The worst. The worst part. They're trying to pretend now that what? They have somehow some sort of connection to the grassroots scene, right? That they're somehow connected to us, techno together. Fuck off. You are playing in the middle of Italy during an entire flipping lockdown. The numbers are spiking. Everywhere Adam Bayer went to go play during his business techno touring trip. Again, not denying him the ability to make money and put food on your table. Do what you need to do. But you are touring throughout this entire lockdown. You don't give a shit about the scene. You might inadvertently cause the scene to delay its reopening. And you're now making a video called Hashtag Techno Together. Get fucked. Oh, God almighty, mate. Absolute weapons. The business techno law. Absolutely horrible. Techno together. In a world where the borders are closed, only thing that will bring us together is my high six-figure DJ gig money and the ability to put my hands in the Jesus Christ pose before you as I DJ my generic beatball top 100 techno. Like, come on, bruv. We don't, we don't believe you. You need more people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Weapons are us, mate. Weapons are us. Anyway, we could, we digress. We digress. Because, anyway, can't we waste more time on this? <laughs> And then in the other DJ news, if it, if, 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 if it wasn't worse than this, because I mean, I want to use the opportunity to just rail upon the scene that I know and love. Look at this amazing article, right? One, I, what are the irony of this article from Mixmag. It says the following. Um, seven DJs tell us why they're so excited about the Pioneer DJ CD 3000s. I wonder why these seven DJs are interested about it. Could it be anything to do with them possibly getting those CDs for free? pioneer could it have anything to do with that or just because they're so excited within the midst of a global pandemic they're going to be able to spend five thousand pounds whatever it may be on a cdj come on this payola must stop it must stop um DJs featured honey d john ben gb eats everything monica kraus pan pot josh newsham et up kyle so, you know, again, many hard-hitting DJs who I'd actually got a lot of time for. Um, so let's, let's see what I have to say. Let's hear what Honey DJ has to say regarding this. Honey DJ, Mix Mag, why are you excited? Why are you so ex the most excited about with the CDJ 3000? Honey DJ says the following. Um, the B jump feature as well as the key change. Is that accent? Can I say accent? I don't know. I'm not good accent. The B jump feature as well as the key change feature will elevate the game. Also, the hot cues and eye level and the loop functions will make performing easier. <laughs> I want to know how much they got paid for this and whether or not they got a free CDJ. That's all I want to know because this is this is a nasty interview, right? Um, touch preview and touch cue points have been added thanks to a bigger screen of CDJ 2000. How will this help you? She says, it will definitely help my workflow, especially when searching for music. That's super important, especially at outdoor festivals, which we all can't go to. It continues. 
To what extent do you think Pioneer DJ has changed the game with its new model? Oh, they were, how can you make this? It's just so disgusting. Who works at who works at Pioneer Marketing? Who thought this is a good idea? This self-flagellation. What? Who does that? Like, what is this, brother? To what extent do you think Pine DJ has changed the game with the model? <laughs> the layout of the new deck, she says, will be much more user friendly with all the hot cues looping and beat jumping alongside a new V10 mixer. It will certainly make more fearless. It will certainly make me more fearless and experimental with DJ says. Okay, that's disgusting, right? Honey, you just have... Yeah, let's continue. Um, how have the various models that CJ helped develop as DJ? She said, as the features keep expanding on the decks, so does my imagination and skills in how I present music. Ah, <laughs> uh, it is. There's nothing worse, right? There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than this sort of like um, what's that word? What's that? What's that saying? Um, uh, is that music journalism? It's like yeah, music journalism is like dancing to architecture. It's just some things are just better not said, isn't it? There is. It's just like ah. Uh, as the features keep expanding on the deck, so does my imagination and skills and how I present music. It's allowed me to be creative, spontaneous with my DJ sets, also advance my performance to a hybrid live musical selector. Honestly, if this is what is required to get a CDJ, I don't want to do it. I'd rather rather pay my money. This is why I'm not a fan of like influencers who only talk about stuff that they get for free. Because if that's the case, then you're going to be sucking off the most deadest of brands. You're going to be, you know, um, you're going to be... Um, talking glowingly about the most shittest of products you're gonna be just making yourself sound like an absolute wanker on an absolute daily maybe some weekly basis for what free gear that you can easily pay for yourself again not getting anyone's pockets but jesus christos what does benji have to say about this or oh, many many paragraphs in it what's he saying here what, what are you most excited about CDJ? He says, the thing that most excites me about the CDJ 3000 is it's really just having a next stage in technology. Oh, God. For me, it's going to it's going, it's going to a stage where the quality and the build and the sound of these products have really gone to leaps and bounds. If you compare it to the original CDJ 1000, which I already had, I'm Benjamin, I'm really cool. Just like you, if you compare the sound of the GGV, DJ MV10 and the DJ M500, for example, everything is on a different level. What a humble brag. How many Pine DJ products has he had over the years? Come on, Benji B, mate. Right, wind your neck in a bit. But with the CDJ 3000, I think I'm most excited about the display. The screen is is much more visual experience and easier to navigate and more attractive to look at. And the whole build feels a lot more professional and solid. I also love the new Q points. I didn't really use uh, the Q points that much in the 2000s. And these new Q points are spread out in a way that is much more practical. <sighs> I guess, man. Uh, and yeah, it continues. I'm not going to read the whole thing. What's, what's it say? What's your role to your big career? The CDJ has been an essential part of my DJing since the introduction of the very first. Again, he's saying he's letting everyone know that he used the first CDJ. We get it, Benji B. You complete all the levels of DJing. We finally get it. But God almighty, man, this sucking off of each other is like, oh, horrendous. This sort of like pat on the back. And it's just so blatantly been paid for by Pioneer. And it's like, yucky, yucky, yucky. If you want to read it yourself, you can. I'll throw a link in the show notes below. You can check it out if you're that way interested. Next on the list, what do we have here? Oh, we have this interesting news, actually. This is cool news. So, um, Bandcamp has had a bit of a resurgence during COVID. Um, I'm assuming people will have a lot more interest in buying directly from their favorite artists and essentially trying to provide them with as much of the cut of the money as possible. As you guys know, streaming services pay artists like you know fractions of a penny on the amount of streams that they get which results in them having to rack up a very high number of streams or to get any sort of sustainable funds out from the streaming platform so Bandcap have come around and created a model that pays out i think the highest amount of portion per buys whatever it may be because you pay yeah you pay per whatever track or album you're paying and the percentages are way more high so of course there's been a whole um you know slew of attention on Bandcamp, and they've decided to expand their services by providing a live streaming segment or platform or feature or tool on their platform which looks pretty great and a very very cool natural extension from the great stuff that they've been doing throughout so this is courtesy of Bandcamp. says so the following ticketed live streaming comes to Bandcamp. It says here today we're announcing Bandcamp Live, a new ticketed live streaming service that makes it easy for artists to perform for and connect with their fans and for fans to directly support the artists they love. 
Bandcamp Live is simple to set up, even if you've never streamed before. It's fully integrated within the rest of Bandcamp. Amazing already. I already thought you're going to require artists to get you OBS and get audio interface. That'd be annoying, but it's already all integrated. Great. This has several benefits. We'll automatically notify your fans when you announce a show. It's easy to buy a ticket what, since you many people already have a banker and camp and save credit card and new buyers become your followers and have the option to join your mailing list. Great. You can also showcase your music and merchandise right alongside your stream in a virtual merch table. How sick is that? I've always said DJs really miss an opportunity. Even now during the lockdown, there's not enough DJs who are doing live streams and also kind of putting merch up to the camera or putting a buy now link everyone's sort of waiting for donations and because for the most part if you're a dj you're not going to make any money on your live stream anyway because you're playing other people's copyright music and you should be making money on it anyway because you're playing for other people's music so if you are going to make money sell like knickknacks sell zines um sell other miscellaneous items that you make you know some apparel whatever it may be but you can just do that during a set and i've always said even in club sets i would be more than willing to give my imagine that inner visions label night that i went to in fold last year right and um you know Innovisions guys bought a box of t shirts, right? Uh, and gear, long sleeves, whatever they sell, right? Beer mats, uh, you know, vinyl mats, whatever. After this gig, I'd much rather pay for it in person than have to wait a few days for it to be shipped over from the EU or something. I'd do it gladly. So I'd, I'd much rather more people do that. But I know some artists feel a little bit away about doing it. It feels a bit disgusting. So maybe having it just fully integrated within the Bandcamp site and it just being some feature you see on the side you can click on makes it a little bit easier to do for some people. It continues. Um, blah, 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 blah. Bandcamp Live also feature an optimal, an optional chat option where your fans can discuss the show and you can engage with your community. Purchases from the merch table appear in the chat, driving more sales. Great to see that. So it's all like you know some websites where they say at the bottom, so and so bought this item. It can be a bit annoying, but I get the idea, right? Because some people do react quite well to that sort of stuff. It continues here. Finally, pricing is completely transparent. We don't pretend our ticket pricing is free and then surprise our fans with a convenience fee when they check out. Your you set your ticket price to whatever you want and that's what your fans are charged our fee is 10 percent, and we're waiving it entirely until march 31st 2021 which is great right so they're trying to get as many people on it as possible to get you know to ramp up the engagement and then hopefully after march people are still going to be hanging around because i'd imagine some djs out there especially the ones that have been streaming a lot during lockdown or artists in general i'd imagine once stuff reopens as much as you're going to be chomping at a bit to get in front of a live audience you're still going to want to have some uh, option to allow fans that aren't there to see your show now whether or not it's going to be possible with the promoters you're working with is another thing but i'm sure a lot of people especially now that you've bought yourself a webcam you've got a gopro you've you've hooked up yourself up to obs you've got used to you know working these streaming platforms like restream whatever it may be there's an aspect or there's an understanding i think there should be some of it where you should be able to take some of that stuff and apply it to your live show i'd love to see that that'll be awesome like you could somehow simultaneously see your favorite artists go all the way from like gathering their records gathering their equipment from the from the beginning of the day all the way until they're set maybe just stream maybe even maybe just the first half an hour whatever it may be live via instagram would be flipping amazing i'd love to see that and um, it continues here when the pandemic eliminated a major source of musicians income we immediately began working on a new ways to, for the help the artists and labels at bank camp without whom we would not exist we started with bank camp fridays a day each month where we waive our revenue share and so far those have raised 35 million in just eight days amazing and um, that is in addition to the 126 million fans have raised um for artists via bank camp bank camp live is the next step in our effort to help our community thrive during the crazy time streaming will never replace the experience of impact performances we believe it's the next best thing and will provide artists with a powerful tool to help build connect with their fans both now and when COVID is behind them again this is why oh uh, we started rolling out bank up lives today and we'll be bringing more artists in the coming months wow look at these ticket events they've got chris firen breens who would i recognize on here not many people in it bobby bobby or as i'm and i mentioned i recognize cloud nothings i'm recognized so yeah a few bands on there again it's a best way to probably support your artists directly definitely get on board there i think it's an incredibly great idea very creative very innovative and hopefully it'll be something that we'll see a lot of artists take control take advantage of you know direct sales ticketed via bank camp if you've got a small audience if you've got a small fan base and they want to support you this is the best way possible set your tickets at like five dollars whatever it may be it's way more money there you're going to be getting any other way anyway regardless of if it's only you have a streaming platform do it make it work i can't wait to see what people do okay next on the list what else do we have here 
Ooh, we have this great story regarding clear mask. It's just <laughs> ah, quite funny. So this brand called Clear Mask supposedly say they make they make and sell eleven million masks internationally, right? And these masks look pretty frightening to me. She said the FDA clearance is the maximum barrier protection and supply chain advantages. The business founded by John Hopkins alumni improves the standard of care for patients. Like, look how scary that is, right? So supposedly this this face mask is an uh, anti fog. So if you can't see it, if you're listening via the audio version of the podcast, there's sort of like a plastic clear thing in the middle which you can basically see the person's mouth in and then a bit of foam on the chin and around the nose which i'm guessing helps with the anti-fogging up but it looks pretty scary um just from my to just because we're so used to seeing everybody with a mask and it sort of like covers your face right like a traditional mask like i have here it just covers your face so you can't see nothing so something like that just looks so bizarre i know you know there is this idea that if i guess there was an idea around some of these kind of like mass startups that have sort of like, you know, popped out of the woodworks, taking advantage of what's going on. There was this kind of idea that if we don't get a vaccine or there's no sort of like light in the tunnel, they are going to have to accept that we're going to have to just live with this virus, you know, for you know years and years to come. So this might make a lot of sense because there's going to come a point where wearing a mask over your face all the time is just going to get annoying. You want to go and see someone's face. So the next possible best thing is to maybe hang around in one of those massive pod things that looks like you're uh, some sort of Star Wars character or these really spooky clear marks things. Again, maybe I'm saying it's spooky now because myself i can be honest with myself and i can say when i saw people from southeast asia in in airports wearing a face mask it used to freak me out i'd be like whoa that looks so weird right you always kind of turn your head again and look look at them because they look so bizarre but now over the last six seven months or six months plus that we've been wearing a face mask how used to it I, my eyes have got so used to it now it doesn't necessarily i don't bat an eyelid seeing someone in a face mask whereas prior it would have been something to kind of not not point at but definitely something to kind of look at like, wow what's happening over there it's definitely something that you felt was a bit of a cultural difference in terms of how people kind of you know, carry themselves but maybe this is the future maybe it is the future but it looks pretty pretty maddening in my experience so this is the following um i guess there's all oh, this selling it it's called the clear mask transparent face mask easy adjuster jesus christ I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm down with this. What it says here? The, the, the first fully see-through surgical mask clear by the FDA. Okay, it's fully see-through, but it's clear by the FDA. That's a major thing because I think some of these ones you see on being sold on Amazon or sometimes sold in Google on the sidebar are definitely not FDA approved. They're just a bit of plastic you put in front of your mouth. Um, it continues, said, the clear mask was co-founded in 2016 by Alyssa Dittmar, ANS, who is proudly deaf, who's profoundly deaf, sorry. Oh, that's why she did it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, true. If you're deaf, how are you going to... Cool. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Uh, da, da. Um, the inspiration for the design came after she experienced confusion and fear before a surgical procedure. She could not read the lips or see the facial expression of the doctor, nurses, or the anthropologist um, administrating her care because the typical surgical mask was covering their faces. Recognizing that many patients must experience the same situation, she and Aaron Hus... Um, or Haran Sue, sorry, spent the several next several months coming up with a solution. Amazing, so in, so inventive. Um, when they found an alternative option on the market, they took matters into their own hands, like all great entrepreneurs do. And researching market size, what was needed to develop the prototype of the transparent mask. Um, and as Enos Lam, a doctoral student at biomedical engineering, and Ines Habo, SPHA. 18 and Curry 18 joined them as part of the medical entrepreneurship course at John Hopkins. Aaron pitched the idea to a class as long-term project and Ellis and I were both immediately drawn to Alicia's compelling story and the potential impact of the transparent mask. Lamb said, we believed in the idea and wanted to help it to become to fruition. Lamb and Hob continued working on the project after the class ended and four-person team was solidified. The mask continued to evolve as the team made adjustments to account for the comfort fit and protection and usability after testing hundreds of different materials and ideas the startup settled on the design since then the clear mask has gone through extensive vetting including studies and third-party lab testing and it remains the only transparent anti-fogging mask on the market fda fda clearance wow i might actually get one myself now have you heard that story i know i started off a bit skeptical but i might get one myself a clear mask that looks pretty cool man pretty pretty cool wow amazing story amazing story again i'll put the link in the show notes below so you can check out yourself it's called all one word clear mask c 
E-L-E-A-R-M-A-S-K, Transparent Face Mask, Easy Adjuster. I'll put in the show note link so you guys can check it out yourselves. Okay, next, what else do we have here on the docket? Ba, 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 ba. Oh, this is a funny one, right? So, of course, as you guys know, I've been covering the instances of um, the sexual indiscretions of a one Brian Callen within the LA comedy, LA comedy scene, LA, LA comedy scene. Um, and of course, the stuff that's happened to Chris Ali, I've also been covering that on this channel. And I guess I was just, you know, bored and stumbling on Google and thought, let me just type in Brian Callen's name on Google News and look what came up. One of the most startling and really confusing stories that I've kind of come across during this whole period. And it features none other than Trisha Paytas, one of my more one of the more unlikable characters I think on YouTube at the moment. I can't stand her. I can't stand her videos. I don't watch any of her content, but she's just annoying, self-obsessed, um, just annoying person. Isn't it? I just have no time for her content. But what an incredibly bizarre headline! Trisha Paytas reveals the troubling reason why an episode on Bank of Hollywood never aired. And it somehow involves Brian Callen. He plays a very prominent part of this story. Really bizarre, right? This is November the 2nd, 2020. So pretty recent. It says the following. YouTube and social media influencer Trisha Paytas has gained negative attention for her controversial statement in the past and her dog shit content. But her recent TikTok posts have shown a side of her, has shown another side of her. In one of her recent posts, she opened up about her episode of the short-lived TV series Bank of Hollywood, which sounds like a terrible short-lived one-season episode of, of a season of something. She was body shamed and humiliated and the host Brian Callen came to her rescue. Brian Callen was hosting a show called Bank of Hollywood, right? Imagine <laughs> her TikTok explanation. Paytas used her TikTok platform to share her experience with her fans. She said, this was the Bank of Hollywood made up of people that I never heard of. Someone from the Pussycat Dolls, this spelling woman, um, some Wilhelmina model guy, and this bitch that I had no idea. Now, first of all, that's a proper Tisha uh, thing to say, right? She's trying to um, sully and insult people that she was on the show and say that they were nobodies when she was on the show with them. So that is always, you know, that's, that's, that's all you need to know about her psyche. It continues. They were so freaking mean to me. So to specify what exactly Paytas was, was talking about, the panel consisted of Melody Fortin, Kennedy's, Kennedy Spelling, uh, Vanessa Russo and Sean Patterson. Right? So we continue. Um... She always looks different in her pictures like this when she does in real life. I'm joking. Hey, she's going to get mad about this kind of things. But anyway, let's continue. <laughs> let's continue. continue. Just, uh, basically, I was asking for more money for boob jobs. Yeah. Ever ever the delightful character she is, isn't it? They basically made me take take off my... Didn't make me... I don't know. Basically, I was asking for more money for a boob job. They basically made me take off my whatever that is. Didn't make me, but asked me to take my hoodie off and my bra off, to which I obliged. Of course, right? She's trying to pretend she's a prude. She's got an OnlyFans. If you've seen the clips and the images that have been leaked of her OnlyFans, it's not some, it's not her doing Q and A's, right? Let's just say that she she doesn't eat. She, she likes cucumbers, but she doesn't, she doesn't eat them. Let's just say that, right? It continues. They totally obliterated my natural boobs and told me how uneven and gross they were and basically humiliated me and ended up not even giving me the money. <laughs> so she purposely went to embarrass herself on a show to get a boob job, gets insulted and doesn't get the money and then starts complaining. Typical Trisha Paytas. It continues. The episode never aired, thankfully, right? MTV, they... Imagine the amount of episodes that are in the MTV vault that never aired and if they did air now, they would completely obliterate what that channel that's already obliterated already as it is anyway it continues um inappropriate is an understatement and her story explains why no one remembers the show and why it was cancelled she said that she began crying profusely in front of a live studio audience which is no surprise she cries every time every single day every single occasion she's always crying in front of the camera and the host brian callen stopped the haunting scenario pritters continues says the following that's when brian came in and saved the day basically told them to stop filming because i was having an actual breakdown Needs to say, it never aired and I was completely scarred. Oh my God. So Brian Callen saved the day, right? For this absolute mess of a woman, right? Who knew? <laughs> While Pages might be thankful to, for Callen for his act of kindness, he's currently facing sexual assault allegations. <laughs> of course, this has nothing to do with her story, but rather information to keep in mind, assuming he's a reputable person. And Matt, of course, come on, the things. Give the guy a break. Yes, he might have, 
you know, pin the girl up against the changing room wall and tried to stick his tongue down her throat and told the woman allegedly that she should be quiet and she's going to be her girlfriend as she quietly raped her in her room. He might have done these things, but he's a good guy because he saved Patricia Paytas, right? <laughs> Fans were shocked to hear about her encounter, and it's worrisome that a public figure like president of the Wilhelmina Models will partake in something so stomach turning. What a wild story, isn't it? Brian Kellen saved Chichapet's life. Who would have believed that? Um, again, absolute mess, isn't it? no surprise there. Absolute bottom feeder, zedless celebrity. He's putting together a really terrible show called The Bank of Bank of Hollywood. I don't know what year that was actually. I'd love to let me see what year that was. Bank of Hollywood. If they've got like a date for on, on IMBD, Bank of Hollywood MTV show. Let's see if someone's someone put something up on there. I'd love to know what day, what year that was that they were kind of filming that show. Two thousand nine. Okay, this was ages ago. Then this was a long, long time ago. Oh, there's actually images of it. <laughs> oh, it's images of Brian Cannon actually in front of it. It looks terrible. Him being the host of this sort of show. Like, what was the premise? Okay, let's look at. Oh no, let's look at the premise. Let's look at because they've got the. The, the wikipedia description here this is the following um bank of hollywood one season reality show in 2009 um celebrities are asked to donate their own money to everyday americans who ask them for cash from a graduate student hoping to get money to buy an engagement ring to his girlfriend to a woman asking for cash to build a wheelchair ramp no request is out of bounds or for candy spelling poker player vanessa russo and publishing executive sean patterson and pussycat doll singer melody fortin decide whether to hand over the cash oh so it's sort of like um uh apprentice for like you know yeah for people right i guess in but for people's problems so also oh, she was a contestant on the show she wasn't even part she was like one of the people like hey i want money for a boob job and then they basically rinsed her boobs because I'm assuming she had to take off her bra and then she didn't get the money. <laughs> Whoa! 2009 was what? 2009 wasn't even that long ago. And this was a show on TV. What absolute madness. Absolute madness. So for as much as these guys might be monsters, which they definitely are, there's definitely an industry, an ecosystem that exists in Hollywood that perpetuates some of this nastiness. This is a TV show greenlit by MTV. God almighty. What a terrible, terrible show. But again, lasted one season. It makes complete sense, isn't it? Why only lasted one season? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. There's not many images of it, is it? It's actually, it's completely been scrubbed from the net, I guess. But yeah, big up Karen in it for being a good guy in that regard. Big up Karen for being a good guy in that regard. Cool. What else we got here? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, we have some very distressing news regarding Benny the Butcher. Hopefully he gets well. He was supposed to be shot um, in Texas, I think, isn't it, right? Texas, recently. He's getting... Um, He's well, yeah. He's on the men now at the moment. I think he was in a Walmart somewhere, and you know, I'm guessing his ops got the drop on him, and guess he confronted him, and you know, it resulted in a shooting. Fortunately, it was only well, I'm gonna say fortunately onto his leg, but I still know you can potentially bleed out if someone shoots you in the leg. So it's no guarantee that you're gonna survive. Regardless, being shot is no joke. Um, and yeah, man, it seems like a freaky time to be a rapper in the states now at the moment. It seems that like there's a lot of tension, a lot of scrutiny, a lot of kind of bad vibes, bad energy coming towards rappers, and it's sort of ending very fatally, right? You got the recent story of Mo free on the highway being chased by his assailant down a flipping motorway and then being shot in the back of the head you've obviously got the issue that happened with Fe uh, with king vaughn unfortunate passing too um when he came when he kind of bumped into quando ronda and his gang um outside a club somewhere and then prior to that we have a couple other people that passed away it's just really really sketchy time to rap at the moment but yeah this is from the source we've got a picture here of west i'm well, sorry benny the butcher um resting up Westside Gun gives an update on Benny Butcher's for his shooting. So hip hop had a stressful week. A couple of rising stars were murdered, and Boosie Badass and Benny Butcher, yeah, true, were both shot in Texas. The Griselda MC was shot outside a Houston Walmart in a bots robbery. Thankfully, he's recovering well, and Westside Gun has an update for us. After Benny was discharged from hospital, he hopped on a private jet to enjoy some time with Gun um, in his recovery. He says, "He says I usually wouldn't post this, but Buzz went from the hospital to a private jet um, to smoking Butcher's breath with me." Was so caption the post ala akbar hashtag butcher duh, duh, duh. you can see the post below yeah for the private jet of smoking butcher so yeah big up him man so hopefully it gets well very soon and hopefully this spat of violence and really horrible encounters ends in hip-hop at the moment again who's to blame 
Is it the music? Is it the scene? Is it these rappers, you know, flaunting their wealth on social media, geotagging their locations everywhere, rubbing their wealth in people's... Because, I don't know, maybe maybe the streets are always going to be the streets, right? That is the thing. We have to just kind of recognise. The streets are always going to be the street. But there is a part of me that thinks, especially even with during COVID, I think I mentioned previously about a PDD party, it sort of like hits different. Before, I'm, I'm always celebratory of people's, you know, wealth and trappings of the wealth and just looking at it from outside and thinking wow it's amazing they did doing this and doing that but even myself i caught myself thinking like what the hell are you guys doing when i saw p did these pictures like we're going through a global pandemic or some of us are and we're basically having to forego all the luxuries that we're kind of been used to because most of the world's been cut off to us but if you're within the kind of one percent of the one percenters you can somehow still kind of live your life and maneuver with no with little to no restrictions you know in, in you know if you need if need be there are things available to you that are not available to the everyday citizens and even myself i got caught myself feeling a little bit like fuck this guy man why is he kind of rubbing this in my face so imagine if you're a mean-spirited street dude that wants to inflict pain and kind of assert dominance on somebody and see some of that parading their wares through a, 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 a local walmart that you go and frequent on of course you're going to feel a way about it and want to do something now of course do i agree with it do i condone it of course not but there i wonder if that has to does that plays a part in it again the music you can say hey, it's violent or whatever but it's always been you know violent and kind of street influence since his obsession hip-hop right it comes from the streets um that's one of the one one of the five elements i'd assume of hip-hop but there's no denying that all this kind of flagrant expressing of wealth and what you've got and the trappings of it on social media isn't helping things now should people be going out and pulling out a gun on you and shooting your leg in a walmart of course not but we need to take a look at that and hopefully make some necessary changes because we can't be having some of our better rappers and artists you know succumb into such um horrible occasions just because of people's jealousy we can't be having that and so let's not encourage it that's my assertion next on the list here ba -ba 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 -ba. But what else do we have here? Ah, oh, yeah, let's go about this one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, two of our, two of our most, um, was it two? Yeah, two of our more prominent rappers in the UK, um, Hedy One and Tion Wayne, got involved in a bit of a kerfuffle aboard a Dubai flight. Right, I guess most of the most people in the UK, I guess it's different if you're in the US. Everyone's mostly going to like um where they going to they're going to puerto rico dominican republic mexico right so places that people are going to in order to kind of escape the perils of the lockdown if you've got some money that's where people are kind of heading out to but in the uk the sort of like go to destinations at the moment especially in the midst of covid were prior to covid were greece but that's since been locked down i'm assuming there's some sort of quarantine restrictions that are not allowing people to go and then if the other option is to go now is dubai because things are relatively back to normal in dubai you have to wear face masks everywhere because i've been following a few fitness influencers who kind of go out there to obviously continue doing their fitness influencing content and you know whatever else they're doing because you can do that kind of remotely for the most part especially if you've got courses that you sell online and you've coached people via live streaming and also via facetime and skype and whatever it may be and um zoom and all that sort of good stuff so if you're an artist and you, you know, you especially if you're some of the upper echelon artists, you want a bit of a break, best place to probably go is Dubai. Of course, you can't get up to some of the other bits of nonsense that people get up to, but I'm sure if you've got a fixer that's on the ground, you can probably hook some things up for you. But it seemed like a lot of people were kind of going out at the same sort of time, innit? The sort of this week, last week, and I guess the next couple of weeks going forward, especially if the lockdown continues. And for some odd reason, some odd reason, um, Tion Wayne and uh, Hedy One happened to bump into each other happen to be on the same flight going the same direction now i i reckon because there's probably limited flights going to dubai in general right even though it's not far from the uk i'm sure there's only limited service running at the moment maybe a couple of flights a day if that so there's gonna it's gonna kind of increase the chances of them crossing paths and it did unfortunately cross paths and it got into a fight on the plane <laughs> and it's funny because a flight to what london to dubai isn't short right it's what I'm assuming it's going to be like eight hours, right? Let me say off the top of my head. I don't know what it is. It's definitely going to be about eight. So if it's about eight hours, right? They're having to fight like this at the beginning of the, of the flight before they've even sat down. And then they're having to like sit and brew and put their headphones on, eat their little food, go to the toilet, knowing full well that they've had a full up dusters on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hilarious side of it and i don't know what it was about again maybe it's a gang affiliate i have no idea i don't pay that much attention to it i just in the music i don't know they probably got some beef in terms of postcode stuff but it's just funny to see from the outside and also the other subtext of it 
somehow Morrison was the one that was splitting up the fight, right? Somebody that, you know, it doesn't need to be explained why Morrison, well, it's funny that Morrison's the one's breaking up the fight, but it is funny that he happens to be the the cooler head, the one that's sort of trying to maintain the peace whilst these two heathens are trying to, you know, go out on a plane. So let's play the video. <laughs> I got it up on your screen. <laughs> Pussy. 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 Uh, that's I guess that's Tion Wayne like went for the overhand right overhand right uh, looping right hand overhead overhand sorry yeah the looping right hand to the side of Heady One's face it looks like and then he does that thing where he pretends everyone's holding him back and doesn't want to keep on going. <laughs> Pussy. 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 Oh, absolute barbarians! What are they doing? What they're doing, man. Imagine all the trappings of wealth that they have at the moment, all this access, the ability even to just go away, right? The ability to go on holiday to Dubai, a lovely country for, by the looks of it. From what I've seen on YouTube and people's vlogs, I've never been there myself, but it looks lovely. The planes look flipping delightful and you're fighting. Come on, man. Get your act together, guys. Look up there, he's pussy. He's pussy. He's done it. He's done it. <laughs> and then we've got another angle here from afar. Of these heathens get up to nonsense. There's children, there's children. Who cares about the children? Who is that person that always says there's children? We don't care about the kids. We want to start swinging. I see my ops. It's on site. Kids. Who cares about kids? Look, the movie hasn't even started on the screens, right? They've still got that screen on when you can check the map, see where you are. Oh, wow, we're going to Dubai. How long is the flight? And these guys are swinging. You're probably thinking about your meal. You're worried about going to the toilet. <laughs> and you see these two flipping idiots throwing blows. You want to get nicked? Allow it. Allow it. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's part of the hesitancy, isn't it? They both want to fight, but they know if they continue fighting, they're definitely going to go jail. But then the good thing about it, because it's COVID, no one's really getting arrested for anything, isn't it? It seems like unless you unless you unless you legitimately cut someone's head off in the middle of a street, no one's really arresting you. So that's probably the best part of it. <laughs> Another angle. Oh, same one, right? Doof, dude, look, Another one. Boy, look at him. Look at him. Yeah, you don't like this stuff. You don't like this stuff, innit? You like this. Imagine all this energy and all this aggression at the beginning of the flight, and you having to somehow settle yourself down for the end of it. This is like this is like getting on it, right? At like one a.m. and you've got to go to bed at three. <laughs> it's such an anti climax. Oh my god. Pussy. 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 Look at Eddie one trying to, yeah, doing the old, he's doing, he's doing the old flinch, the old flinch move, isn't it? Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Another angle. This must be, honestly, legitimately, legitimately one of my nightmares in terms of fights. Like fighting in a lift and fighting in an airport or fighting in a plane. Your movement's restricted, right? You can't actually. There's not. There's not a lot of space, and I guess it's easier if you if you can fight. It's easier because I'm assuming the more limited your space is, the more you can sort of use your actual skills in order to kind of you know uh, avoid getting hit and obviously hitting on the counter. But if you don't know how to fight, the lack of space is definitely going to affect how you actually win, or actually, or actually how it appears like you win. Because if that person gets hits you once. And then you stumble and you fall into the seats and you're sort of all discombobulated and your phone's in the air and you're trying to regain balance and you're getting elbowed in the face. You're going to look mad on camera. It's never going to look good. Same with the lift. If someone's got a drop on your lift and they're just pummeling you into a corner, headbutting you into a corner, you're just going to look wild on the CCTV. That's my issue. Whereas if you're, in, if you're out in the open, you can somehow, you know, avoid everything, innit? That's my hope. I guess so. I don't know if that's actually true, but oh you gotta love it, man. Two of our finest exports, two of our finest, biggest hip hop stars, right? Rap stars in the scene, yeah, you know, setting a good example, swinging on a Dubai flight and just having a world of a time. You gotta love it. You gotta bloody love it. Anyway. That is Jackson Zing Show, episode number 401. Thanks so much for tuning in. As per usual, it's been a pleasure to have your company. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you're tuning in via the podcast app, make sure you share the show, download it and share it to all your friends. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Until then, take care, be safe, peace.